Hello, hello, and welcome to another whiskey review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me. Moreover, thank you for sticking with me. It's good to have you here. Uh, we're looking at a whiskey this time, the which I'm going to suggest, unless you are sort of into Irish whiskey or you've shown an interest in Irish whiskey, sort of down the Irish whiskey side of things, you maybe never have heard of. Uh, it's an old name. It's an old name from an older distillery and it has been revived. Old Cumber, right. Let's do a bit of history. Give you a quick history lesson before we go much further, shall we? Uh, Cumber is a little town about 10 miles from Belfast, just sort of almost at the north of the Ards Peninsula there. And uh, the, in between 1825, sort of around 1825 and 1956, there was a distillery, the Cumber Distillery. A very popular distillery in their day. They uh, were producing pot still whiskey, which was held in a very high regard. As I said, that distillery closed uh, 1956. Just another remnant of the Irish whiskey uh, trade at that time. You know, it, it, it all fell apart. The name has been revived. It has been revived by Ecklenville Distillery. Ecklenville Distillery down there in the Arch Peninsula, about 14 miles from Cumber. So the, the old distillery there, gone in the 1850s. Name has been revived. That's just, uh, there's a bit of an elephant in the room with Old Cumber. A couple of years ago, Ecklenville released an Old Cumber and it was a pot still. Let's just get this out of the way quickly. It was a pot still held in very high regard again. I, I only tried a sample of it, but it was beautiful. Really, really good. This isn't the same thing. However, that changes nothing. Uh, it's not the same thing. I just wanted to get it out of the way. This is their latest release of the Old Cumber. We've been waiting a while on this, but uh, this is actually a blend. There, it's a blend. So what? I just wanted to differentiate between the, the, the Old Cumber, which was released a couple of years ago, and this Old Cumber, this iteration of the Old Cumber. Old Cumber will come back by Ecklenville again as a pot still, but for now we've got this, this blended version. And don't let that put you off. The fact that it's a blend puts people off sometimes. Don't let that put you off. And I will explain why not to let it put you off here. This has had, I'm going to give you a few other details about this whiskey. This is a blend, as I said. It's a blend of 65% grain whiskey, 35% pot still whiskey produced at Ecklenville. Uh, that pot still whiskey is a marriage of casks of pot still which have been matured in ex bourbon cask, ex sherry cask, and ex port cask. They that thirty five percent of pot still married together, blended with a grain which also had a flash. I'm going to call it a flash finish in port casks. So it was grain flash finished in port casks, blended together to produce this forty six percent. There's a lovely rose gold colour. I generally don't talk about colour in whiskey, but I think there's a lovely rose gold colour off this. Um, 46%, non self filtered a term which means very little to me whenever it's in a blend, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying it's natural colour because I don't think it says on it, but I just, I like the colour of it. So let's get into the whiskey. I'll tell you what I think of it, and then we'll come back with a few more, yeah, it's some bits and bobs and details, shall we? Look, I get a nose off the, one of the first things I got off this, and I've used this term before, I've used this note before, leap cooking. Leap cooking that um, honey, I think it's honey derived, uh, German style, almost gingerbready Christmas biscuity cake thing that comes around sort of once a year. But leap cooking, and it, it, to me, it's a very, very distinctive flavor. I love them. And that was the first thing I spelt on here. There's a slightly, Overripe and funky fruit note in the background. There's a bitter wininess, which I would have expected given that uh, it's marriage of maturations, given those marriage of casks, port sherry, you know, all of that stuff. So I would expect a bitter wininess, and it's there. It doesn't, it's not off putting. And there's even I got even a slightly lactic tinge, which once again put some people off. Didn't put me off here. It works quite well with it. One of the things that I love about it, I'm sort of giving, I'm sort of wearing my heart in my sleeve with this one. One of the things I like about this whiskey is that it, it's, 
it's, it doesn't overplay the sweetness. Given its blend, it probably should. Given that blend of maturations, that blend of casks, the fact that it's, it's grey and heavy, it probably should be sweeter on the nose than it is. But it tends to borrow more from that, as I said about that leek cooking thing, that gingery, honeyed, and we, sort of weird, funky, fruity, overripe fruit notes. It seems to it seems to borrow more from them than it does from sweetness, and I, I'll take that all day long. Because I'm sort of growing a little weary of sweet whiskey all the time. Just seems to be a lot of sweet whiskey all the time now, and this was something that I, I appreciated from this one as soon as I tried it. So let's see what the palate does. Soft, better sweet delivery. This instantly has body. Once again, like the nose, it has balance. Again, it doesn't overplay that sweetness. The sweetness, it's weird, the sweetness almost times out before it becomes overpowering. It is, there is a sweetness there, obviously, and once again, how could there not be, given, as I said, that it's a 65% grain, that grain flash finished in, in port casks, that pot still, uh, ex-bourbon, ex-sherry, ex-port. So there's, there's sweet at play all the way through this but it's been so well, I'm, I'm just going to use the word balanced again. It's, it's, there's a professionalism here. Vanilla pods, which I believe it mentions on the label, sit alongside plum and honey. And all the while, all the while that whininess is there, which once again is to be expected. However, even the whininess sometimes shows itself as a as a quite a nice nuttiness. It's nice. Uh, it's very nice. Here's what I'm going to tell you. It's the finish in this that makes it for me. The finish is long. It reminds me of cream soda. Depending on where you're from in the world, I'm not quite sure whether you whether you know cream soda or not, but vanilla like creamy thing. It's one of the it's it really is truly one of the biggest successes with this whiskey. Because the finish lasts, but it's not, it hasn't got a big, it has not all peppery heat. As a matter of fact, there's very little heat with this at all. It's that creaminess with the vanilla edges around it and, and just all the, 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 even that hint of whiny funkiness hangs around. Lovely. I'm not going to add water. I, I did add water during my tasting notes. And the reason I'm not adding water here is that it didn't change it, it didn't change it, it didn't change it, it drowned it. It was one of those things, drop by drop by drop. It sort of didn't really change an awful lot. It just softened a little. And then after a while, after I'd added, I'm going to suggest too much water, it just drowned it. So uh, no point adding water and, and ruining a perfectly good dram sometimes. I like this. Not only do I like this, do you know what this has done? And I am genuine when I say this. Now, I, <laughs> I'm going to wear my heart and my sleeve once again here and tell you that I know quite a few people uh, behind this whiskey. I know quite a few people uh, behind in the team behind this whiskey. That changes nothing. That changes absolutely nothing. I know a lot of people behind a lot of teams behind a lot of whiskies and I'll still be honest about what I think about them. This, 
this whiskey as a blend and this is this is quite a <laughs> this is quite a bold statement this 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 whiskey pretty much refreshed my interest in irish whiskey i haven't had this that long but i'm a good third of the way down the bottle i know i generally sort of hold off until i'm quite a bit further down the bottle before i review it i and i know this has come through this is has come with sort of mixed reviews already uh, I think a lot of people feel, as maybe did I, as maybe did I, felt a little, uh, it was a step back, uh, going from what was a fantastic pot still a couple of years ago to a blend. Yeah, okay, I can understand that. What it has proved to me, and I've had this in the past, is, is what can be done with blends nowadays. Uh, and that I've tried blends recently that have been really, really grain heavy really grain heavy but they've tasted like quality single malts so it's what people are doing with blends nowadays and what they're fit to do with grains is quite impressive this has refreshed my interest in irish whiskey it really has uh fair play the people at ecklenville to me you've actually done really really well with this i'm convinced it's that it's the fact that this is such a complete whiskey that, that does it for me. Now, there's always something. There always has to be a bit of a downside, doesn't it? There's a bit of a downside in this for me. My downside in this is this is £55. That's it. That's You'll not pay less than that unless somebody's making a loss on it somewhere. I don't think you'll pay less than £55 for it. It's a blend. It's too much. It, do you know, I think if it had been about £15 cheaper than that, £40 is definitely a renewable price on this all day long. I would pay that and, and renew it. When there's blends out there, and I'm stepping outside of Ireland here, and I'm, I'm, I'm going back into Scotland, but when the likes of Adelphi are putting out blends like uh, McLean's Nose, etc., for £35 a bottle, and and it's, it's actually a blend of malt, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but... You know, a, a really good blend of whatever it may be. There are some great blends out there. This, it's affordable, yes, at £55. It's quality, yes, at £55. It's just a, a bit too dear. And it's, to me, it's sort of Ecklenville. It, it, this is something with Ecklenville. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm laying it all out there now while, while, I, while I do it. That their pricing's a little up and down in places. Some of their pricing, I think, is right on the money. It's bang on. And weirdly, it's their more expensive stuff, I think, is is 100% the right price. It's some of their lower-end stuff, I just think, is a little overpriced. That's just my beef with them. But this, to me, is a success. This, I hope this does well for them. This won't be around forever. There was only so much of this made. Uh, so this ain't going to be around forever. If you can get your hands on it, I just think it's a really good blend. I, I was... I think one of the one of the major things to come out of this for me was how pleasantly surprised I was by it. Because I tried samples of it. I tried a couple of samples of it and I wasn't impressed. But I bought a bottle nonetheless and sat down with it. And it reminded me not to always base everything on a sample because samples can be, you know, things happen. So, you know, sometimes if it's affordable, if you can do it, buy the bottle, give it a go yourself, take your time over it. And, and as I have here, you can be pleasantly surprised. So let's just move on. Yes, pleasantly surprised. You don't hear me saying that very often, do you? Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen all the time. Just pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly surprised by this. So. Hmm. If I like it, what uh, then can I offer up as an alternative well actually I didn't have to think that long about this it did actually remind me of something but and I'll, and I'll show you what that something is first there Jameson uh, black barrel proof it sort of reminded me of it around the same I would say that the Jameson black barrel proof round and about the same sort of price as uh, the old cumber maybe slightly dearer than the old cumber both um, 
pot still, green blends. You know, actually, I'm going to suggest that the old Cumber is better than the, than the Jameson Black Barrel Proof. It, it's for me it is better than the, the black barrel proof so as i said if this is coming in cheaper and you're looking at the black barrel proof yes the black barrel proof is ball at 50 percent yes it's limited edition it says I, I haven't seen it be terribly limited but um maybe more available i would say the jameson black barrel proof even as a limited edition is probably more available than the old cumber but uh, that's sort of along the lines of what it reminded me of just so yes fairly similar these two whiskies i would actually go as i said for the old cumber over the jameson black barrel proof however if you haven't tried jameson black barrel proof and you want to know if you want an idea sort of roughly where the old cumber's coming from that's roughly where i think it's coming from it's around that sort of same feel however the old cumber a bit more balanced not as sweet as the jameson yeah as i said it just it's good it made me proud to be in this island of Ireland where whiskey like this is being produced and I hope the old Cumber name starts to get spread around again there you go good to be back thank you for joining me thank you very very much to my patrons should anybody wish to join that group the details are in the video description below I'll be back the next time with something a little different until the end until the, the end until the end until then <laughs> look after yourselves here's to your good health Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.